All right, now today we're going to look at the opposite side. This is all about making the chromatic number much bigger than the maximum clique size. Now we want to look at conditions that force them to be the same. And so we're going to start with a definition. A graph is perfect if the chromatic number of H is the maximum clique size of H for every induced subgraph of G. Not just, not just, and of course that also requires that the chromatic number of G is the maximum clique size of G. Now look at the graph that I've shown. For the whole graph, what is the maximum clique size? Four. Everybody see a, a four clique in there? All right, now just kind of look at it. Can you color that with four colors? Sure. Okay, now does that prove that the graph is perfect? No. You have to check every induced subgraph. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine vertices. How many induced subgraphs are there? Uh, counting the empty subgraph, there's two to the nine. As many subsets as there are of the nine element set. But that task is not all that difficult. I mean, you don't really have to do them all. Let's just look at things. If I keep the four clique and throw away anything else, then the maximum clique size is the chromatic number, which is four. So I don't really have to worry about it until I start throwing away things from the clique. Now, if you delete any one of the four elements in that four element clique, then the maximum clique size drops down to three. But now just kind of look at it. If you delete the upper right corner, then you've got maximum clique size three, uh, but just like one, two, three, one, two, one, two, okay. Yeah, I can three color that. And once I can three color with, with any one vertex removed, then it's okay for the rest of them. Okay. And so in five minutes work, not five hours work, I can handle enough case, cases to convince myself that for every induced subgraph H, the chromatic number is the maximum clique size. Once I kill the triangles, it becomes a forest, and then obviously the chromatic number is at most two, and it's two all the way down to where I kill all the edges. All right, so this graph is perfect. Let me show you a graph which is not perfect. And we observe that any graph which contains an odd cycle as an induced subgraph is not perfect. So I've made a, a really modest change in this graph. Let me toggle back. Let me toggle forward. The first one was perfect. This one is not perfect. Now, as it stands, the chromatic number is the maximum clique size, which is four. But this graph is not perfect because it has an induced subgraph whose chromatic number is not the same as its maximum clique size. In particular, do you see the five element cycle in the middle? And that's enough to kill it. Any graph which contains an odd cycle on five or more, not three, but five or more, is not perfect. So this graph is not perfect. For all you computer buffs out there, let me ask you this question. How hard is it to detect whether or not a graph contains an induced odd cycle? Not just contain an odd cycle, but contain an 
induced odd cycle. How would you write code to do that? See, when we gave an algorithm for testing whether or not the chromatic number of a graph is at most two, that graph algorithm tests whether or not the graph contains an odd cycle. But it doesn't deal with the issue of an induced odd cycle, just an odd cycle. So a three cycle, which kills chromatic number two, does not kill com perfect graphs. So that, that problem turns out to be a little bit more subtle than you might imagine. So if you like to play with code, write a code which answers this question. Does G contain an odd cycle? Yes or no? That problem belongs to the class NP. Because if you say the answer is yes, all you have to do is to produce the odd cycle. And the impartial referee can check your answer and confirm you're dead spot on. That is an induced odd cycle. But there doesn't seem to be an efficient algorithm to test a no answer. If you're working with ordinary in in ordinary subgraphs and not the concept of induced, then you can show that there are no odd cycles by producing a two coloring. That's why does a graph contain an odd cycle is not in NP, it's, it's in P. You can pr provide a certificate for a yes answer and you can provide a certificate for a no answer. And you can explain how you did it. Right. Well, that problem is, is subtle.